Sven and welcome back to Fishing with Sven. So for today, I'm going to do something that I call uh, roaming surf fishing. Now, I'm pretty sure there's an actual name for it, but that's just what I've been calling it. The point of roaming surf fishing is that you fish to surf, but like about every 5 to 10 minutes, if you're not getting any nibbles or bites, you just move down 10, 20 feet and then you try again. That way you can kind of encompass the whole area of the beach. You can test to see different locations. In some locations there might be no fish. A couple feet down the line there could be a school of fish just waiting there. That's um, why I'm going to be doing uh, roaming surf fishing. Also, secondary goal is to do a catch and cook. I bought a travel backpack and a tiny grill, a baby grill and some charcoals. I also brought like some seasonings and a special marinade that I made at home. So hopefully I catch something and I can feed myself for the day. So for the rod, I'm using a custom rod that my wife uh, actually put together for me. I had a dream about a year and a half ago where I had a really cool strong rod and it was named the Sven and it looked almost exactly like this so she uh, she took note of what I told her and she uh, put it together for my birthday. I had a custom order and it's my favorite go-to rod. I use this rod for everything whether it be surf fishing, jetty fishing, even freshwater fishing when I dabble in that sometimes. So this is my uh, number one rod. I don't remember the exact length of it. When you're surf fishing you want a good good length. You want at least honestly at least six feet. Anything less will be um, uh, hard to work with. Now for the reel, it's a Pen Conflict 2 saltwater reel. This is perfect for basically anything. I, could, I use this for freshwater, I use this for saltwater. It's saltwater great so it won't fail on you as fast and all you have to do is after you're done give it a, a little rinse, just pour some fresh water on the top, maybe spin it around a bit and you're good to go. You just gotta take care of your gear and your gear will take care of you. I gotta tell you, this is a great reel. Very smooth, it's very responsive, and I've had other reels that start making weird noises. An amazing reel all together, and it's really smooth. Now for the line, it's 20 pound braid. I find that 20 pound braid is a good average for surf fishing. It's a nice sturdy line. I also prefer braid because sometimes I leave my rods in the car and if it gets too hot, the monofilament starts to warp. For the weight, when you're fishing the surf, you want to get uh, sinkers like this, nice and flat, so it doesn't uh, roll around the waves. And then for uh, bait, I'm using fresh uh, head-on uh, shell-on shrimp with a size of uh, six hook. If you're going to buy shrimp from the supermarket, get head-on shelled shrimp. I find that those uh, hold the most flavor. So let's see if we catch anything today. It's a little windy, so. Casting is going to be somewhat finicky. Uh, I'm going to try my best though. Well, it's been about five minutes. I uh, didn't get a single nibble, so it's time to uh, move on down the beach. All right, that's a good uh, 20, 30 feet. Let's try this again. Still nothing. It must be a really bad day to try to fish. Oh, well, never give up. Just gotta keep trying. It's already been about maybe an hour of moving back and forth. So I guess just keep on moving. Well, I'm gonna move the bucket up. Almost lost my bait. Almost lost my knife too. That's the thing about surf fishing, you just gotta watch out for the tide. I remember I went fishing with a buddy once. Out of nowhere, there was like a huge rogue wave. Went up maybe 10 feet higher than where the waves are normally breaking. And all our stuff got wiped. Uh, my tackle bag got wiped, his tackle bag got wiped. Uh, we had like some drinks, they also got wiped. You just gotta watch out for that. I'm feeling optimistic though. I'm feeling like this is the cast that's gonna get a Get a fish. Just gotta stay positive and it'll come. Fish are there, I know they're there. I just gotta wait for them to take a bite. This is the cast. Well, didn't catch anything day one, so for today we're on day two. 
as you can see, I've changed shirts. It's no longer blue long sleeve, it's a green one. That's a great indicator that it's a new day. No bite yesterday, all the way until uh, the sunset. I decided just to go home, try again the next day. So, new day, new luck. Here's first cast of the day. See if we get anything first cast. I think I'm getting some nibbles. Come on. Ah, might have missed him. Or he might have just taken my bait and ran. Yeah, he took my bait and ran. Oh well. I have decided to add a second hook. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. For the last one, it took my bait and then left. So I was thinking, if I have two hooks out, if it takes the first one, the second one is probably still there and I might go for it. It's like a, a second chance. And the second hook is also a slightly smaller hook. So in case the fish's mouth is too small for the big one, the slightly smaller one might land it. But who knows? We'll see what happens. Even if the fish is too small, I'll throw them back, but I want to know what's out there. Feeling pretty good though. So let's cast out the, the dual hook ones. It's there, it's nibbling. I just also see a whole bunch of birds just diving for a like small bait fish, I'm assuming. Well, I just gotta check my bait now, I guess. Man, I don't know what that was. It felt like a like a whole swarm though. Could have just been a really tiny fish. Oh wait! I did catch one. <laughs> there we go. It's a yellow fin croaker. Nice. There we go. Now there's no size limit on these guys and I think I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna go ahead and unhook them and put them in my bucket. This is a nice good small to medium size. I'd like to catch a bigger one, but this is probably the best I could do for right now. I'm gonna keep trying, but you know, this is this is good for me. Whoops. So that's one fish. I'm gonna try to get another one. I moved down about 40 feet from my other spot and I'm gonna give it another go. So I like the double hook system. It's really nice when they take one and then there's a second one to work with. So look at that guy. Look at him go. I always think that looks incredibly fun. I wanna do that one day. Let's try to get another one. Hope he didn't spook all the fish. This beach chicken has been following me. I think he wants my shrimpy bait. Look at him go. Well, it doesn't seem like I'm getting any more bites, so I'm gonna go ahead and head back. I'm gonna go on the jetties, set up my uh, grill to uh, cook up the croaker I caught, because I'm getting kind of hungry. All right, now I'm out on the jetty, and I found a really nice little uh, cove to set up my grill. The only problem is, Look at all this trash. It's not really in my way. Looks like there's broken glass everywhere. Last thing I want to do is cut myself on broken glass trying to pick up someone else's mess. Alright, here it is. This is a baby grill that I uh, picked up. Incredibly small. So first what I want to do is some uh, newspaper, crumple it up, and I'm going to grab some charcoal. Start lining it down. This is more than enough charcoal for that one fish. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and prep a trash bag so I can throw away all the stuff that I brought. So, the trash bag's over there. There. Let's get the newspaper going. This might take a bit. The ventilation for this charcoal grill isn't the best. gonna move some of this charcoal around. All right, there we go. I have piled them all up. There's a small flame going in on there. Should uh, take care of the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and prep the fish. Should be done by then. So I took care of them earlier. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and start scaling them. I'm just gonna take the back of my knife and just start running it up against the scales. You can buy a fish scaler, I think for like a, a dollar or two, but I find that it's not really necessary. Take the back of your knife and just go at it. Go to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and cut off his head. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to gut him. Take your knife back here and just kind of start slicing up, pulling all the guts out. Scrape out everything that's in the body cavity. Take care of the bloodline right there. Scrape that out. I'm going to go check to see if there's any more scales. If you don't cut off the fins while you're scaling, it's also a nice handle like I'm doing right now. Just, now I'm going to give him a rinse. And there we go. He's all nice and clean. When you're going to grill with bamboo skewers, soak them in water for about like an hour or so. This is to prevent the skewers from burning. I'm not going to do that because this is fish. 
take this skewer and I'm going to run the skewer right down the top till it pokes out the other end. Alright, like so. Now this isn't entirely necessary. I'm only using the skewer so I have something I can grab a hold of when I'm just flipping without having to worry. And give him one more rinse. And there you have it. One headless fish all cleaned up, ready to go. It's yelling at me. Here's the grill plate. So this is what I'm going to be using. It's my own little um, mixture that I made. Balsamic vinegar, ponzu, and it's garlic. And put it right on top. Yeah, I already have the skewer set up. I don't need the grill plate. And while it's cooking, I'm just going to put more of this on it. This doesn't take uh, long to cook at all, so just flip it around every so often and check on it. Almost done. And there you have it. One grilled uh, special seasoning fish. Chopsticks for myself. Cheers. Oh, that's real nice. Nice and flaky. I probably should have marinated it. Pour it right on top. Oh, I just realized I have multiple paper plates. Here we go. So now I'm just going to go ahead and just start picking away at this. Make sure I don't get any of the bones. Super tasty. Super fresh. Nothing beats freshly caught fish. Hands down. That would be good with this. A little bit of rice. Well, I didn't pack any rice. Look at this meat right here. So good. Right, I'm going to go ahead and just relax and just finish eating this now. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was my first um, solo catch and cook and I learned a lot. Um, the space that I'm at right now is a little cramped. Next time hopefully I catch more fish and I'll try a different recipe with it. But so far I'm really liking this uh, ponzu, balsamic vinegar and garlic. It has all the flavors I like. The acidity from the balsamic vinegar, the saltiness and the citrusness from the ponzu, and a whole bunch of garlic flavor. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next video.